Welcome to episode 18 of Beginner Web Design, and in this video we are going to take a look at JavaScript functions. And functions are very, very similar to variables in that when we define a variable, we're defining a value, whether it be an integer or a piece of text or a boolean, that we just want to use multiple times within our script, and we may need to edit it at some point. Functions, on the other hand, they are an entire block of code that you want to run whenever you want. So basically, if you have a bunch of scripts that execute multiple times on your page, you can put them into one function and just call that single function whenever it's needed. The benefit of doing so is that you can now edit that function at any time and it will automatically update wherever your script uses that function. So let's just jump right into this and define a function. So <clears throat> to do that, we want to uh, type function at the top. And after we type function, we're going to type a space and then the name of that function. So I'll name this just example. Uh, do note that this is case, case sensitive. So example is different from example and so forth. And we're going to put two parentheses at the end. Uh, as for right now, just leave them there, but at the end of this video, or near the end of this video, I'll show you exactly what they do for us and what you can put inside those parentheses. Uh, just like in CSS, we're going to put in open curly bracket, and then at the end of our function will be a closed curly bracket. Now in the last video, we also only use a single command, which was document.write. And in this video, I'll go ahead and give you another one that you can use, which is alert. And alert just basically uh, makes a dialog box come up on your web page, just alerting the user of some information. So in our function, I'll call in alert. And this works pretty much the same as document.write. You want to have two parentheses after alert. And inside is going to be a string or a, a number. So uh, always don't forget to put single or double quotes when you're typing a string. And we'll say uh, hello there in our alert box and then a semicolon at the end. So go ahead and save this. And if we pop open our uh, little browser here, we don't really see anything. And if you're just wondering, this, uh, this button is just because I have that in the page.html. But as for this alert box, nothing comes up. And that's just because, by default, these functions won't actually invoke themselves. Even though they're on the code, they aren't used unless you specifically say, use this function. So let's do that now. All we have to do is type example, the parentheses, and a semicolon. If we refresh, we get this little nifty dialog box on uh, the top of our page. And so that's, that's pretty much a, a very simple example. And of course, you can combine multiple things in here. So you could say document.write. And now let's write, you've said hello. Uh, you see hello there. And then it also says you've said hello uh, via document.write. Now really, the true greatness of functions is that we can choose to use them only when we want. So right here, I just have example in my script and what it's doing is as soon as the page is being, uh, as soon as the page is being accessed, it is running this function because it's on this line. However, maybe we don't essentially want this function to run as soon as the page is loaded. Maybe we want it to run when something is pressed. So to do that, we have to actually go into HTML. So even this, even though this says calculate shipping, I'll just use it for now. Um, you see over here, I have just a regular button. It started off just like a button, but then I also added this on click attribute, as you just saw. And there are just a bunch of these attributes that you can add. You can see if I type on into my code of text editor, it actually gives me all of them here. And uh, the ones that are really most common or uh, I shouldn't even say that because 
really all of them are used uh, very frequently. There's on click, there is on hover, there is on mouse enter, on mouse out, on focus for selecting a text field, on blur for deselecting a text field. Uh, if you can just see, there's a whole lot of them that you can use. So of course I'm using on click for this one, as you could see. So to actually tell it to use that function on the click, we can just type the function name in these print in these uh, quotation marks here, and that's example. Again, you still need those two parentheses. And now if we load the page, nothing happens by default, but once we click it, we get hello there, and it also echoes that on the page. So again, not too difficult. Um, you can actually chain together different commands in these attributes here. So if I wanted to, let's just say, run this function, but also uh, write something else onto the page, we can put in another semicolon, or uh, I'll give you another example. Maybe we want another alert box that's exclusive to this button. We could say, this is the shipping button. Put a semicolon after that as well. Now when we click it, hello there, this is the shipping button. So that's how basically you can put multiple different commands inside one uh, attribute as so. So now let's go ahead and actually uh, add some more functionality to our functions. So what I'm going to do is just clear this out of this on click attribute. And we'll actually make this calculate shipping function as the button says. So um, I'll just leave this as function example for now. It doesn't really matter. but. Let me show you how this is actually useful. So basically functions can have variables that are exclusive to that function and will only be run inside that function. So let's just say that for whatever reason, this company has this weird shipping policy which just requires a lot of different variables. So maybe it was the price times 0 0.2 plus 25 minus discount times 3. Something like that. Some crazy little formula. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last video, but when you're doing math in JavaScript, just do remember that it will follow order of operations. So discount times 3 is going to be run first, basically. So if you don't want to do that, you'll have to put in some parentheses. But uh, since this is just a fictional little formula, I'll just leave it as it is. And so let's just say we want to do all that. And then let's do a little alert here and give them what the actual price is. So first of all, I forgot. Let me just set a variable here. Var shipping equals that. And then I'll alert the shipping. OK. So now we have these variables in this formula, but where are we going to get them? Well, we could just define them. So we could say var price equals $5 and var discount equals $2. And now if we set it to run this function, we do get a correct result. The function still executes and we get a number as so. However, why would we want to do that if this formula can change based on these variables? So basically what we have to do is allow this variable to this function to be used with any number of variables. So inside these two parentheses, I'm going to put put price comma discount. And now that's just saying that if these two variables are specified, use them in that function. So the way we specify them is to go into our HTML and where it says on click or even in scripts whenever we're just executing this function we can type in those two variables so let's say 3 and 5 so uh, 3 will be the price 5 will be the discount now if we go ahead and run that we get 10.6 about and the beauty of this is that we can now have multiple instances of that little uh, of that function with different prices. So maybe this product is $18 with the same discount and this one is 
uh, with an increased discount. Now we have three different buttons. This one gives 10.6, this one is 13.6, and this one is negative one. So you can see we can use them multiple times uh, if we do allow variables to be inputted into those functions. So it's definitely a little bit handy and uh, I hope you can kind of see how JavaScript is starting to interact with the elements on our page.